Welcome back to another tutorial in Symphony 4. Today we're going to go over page pagination. Um, so what is page pagination? So it's basically you've got a, um, a website and you've got a lot of data. And if I added more data than this list, we'll just continue to go longer and longer. And what pagination does is it allows you to break it up into um, several page numbers. Um, there's, a, there's a couple different tutorials out there for that. I haven't seen many tutorials written specifically in Symphony 4, so I wanted to address that. Um, during the course of this video, if you liked it, you know, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, leave your comments. If you're looking for something specific, let me know and I'll see if I can help you. Um, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to have a, um, you know, just a basic application installed. So let me just go over a couple of the basics that we already have in here. Um, so, of course, you're going to need a, um, a controller. So this video is not intended to show you how to create controllers, entities, and so forth. So if you don't know how to do this, then look back at some of my other videos that I do go over creating controllers and so forth. But here, um, we're basically just going to go over, um, you know, I've got a, a simple controller. And the way that I like to do data in Symfony is I don't want to do my queries inside the controller. I like to do them in my, in my service classes. So to me, that just makes a little bit more sense. Um, let me look at the service class real quick. So this is my basic service class. Um, here, I am basically um, injecting the um, controller interface, and there's a, there's a reason for that. And once you see um, how pagination works, and you'll see you know where that's coming into play. And then I'm injecting Entity Manager interface, and I'm using the constructor to pass it over. Um, and then you have you know basically a simple query using entities, and then the, the results are returned as an object. And then let's just go over the entity, just so you can see how that is operating. So here we've got a basic um, entity. Our table is called test data. Um, I've got a an ID class, well, an ID field, and then I'm, I have five different string you know, five different string columns in my database. And of course, I've got my getters and my setters. So that is a basic entity. Again, if you haven't created entities, um, look back at some of my other videos. I've got a video in Symphony 3 on how to create entities. Um, there's really no difference between 3 and 4 as far as how Doctrine works. All right, so let's install. We're going to install the KNP pagination bundle using Composer. So this is the command. Make sure you are in the proper um, directory, like I was not. Okay, so now once you're in the proper directory, then you're going to issue Composer require, and then KNP lab slash KNP paginator bundle and go ahead and hit enter. And it's been installed. Now obviously it does not install that fast. I hit the pause button. Okay now that we've got KNP installed we um, we need to configure it. So go into your config and then go into your packages um, the difference with Symphony 4 is it breaks up your config into several different files. So let's go ahead and make a new file. And we're going to call that KMP underscore paginator dot YAML. Now you can go straight to KMP site and pull in their configuration. Um, I'm using Bootstrap 4. Um, there are some changes that's not on their site yet, and I'll go over that. So I just copy and pasted in the, um, the default configuration, and this is straight from their site. Um, 
the page, page range is five, but this is really going to be, that's just the default, but we're going to define that further on. Um, the most important thing is the, um, the templates. Um, I'm using Bootstrap 4. The site doesn't show version 4 for the um, paginator template. Um, I found that just by looking into the vendor directory to see, you know, what kind of templates were available. Um, only because the website didn't list um, Bootstrap version 4, it had version 3, and it just didn't look right. So I went, back, went looking and I found version 4. So I'm going to let this sit here for a second so you can um, look at it if you're doing this by hand. And just you know, go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Alright, so let's go ahead and save that file. Then the um, the second part you're gonna need is we're gonna we're gonna modify the um, the framework that YAML file, and we're gonna add your translator. And what this will do is this will translate the um, there's you know for the for the language part. So that way, you know, if your website is written in French or English or so forth, then the buttons should represent the language of your website. So you're just going to do translator and then fallbacks to local. And you can put this anywhere in this file as long as it's, you know, underneath framework. Again, this is the framework.yaml. So go ahead and save that. And that is all of the configuration. So now we're going to actually go over the query. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that nothing has broken. So the, the website still works. It's still pulling data and nothing is crashing inside the template. Now we're going to open up the our service controller. So let's go in, into our source directory. And let's just open up everything so we have the full path. We don't need to open the entities. So now let's talk about the query. So our existing query, um, we take data and then we assign it dollar query, which is part of the data service. And then we're, we're going to call return data. And so that gets put into an object. And if we wanted to, we could issue a dump command and then we can see what the data looks like. So if we come back over to twig and here's here's our dump. This is a good tool for troubleshooting so and you can even put that straight into twig which will it'll just put it on the page without you having to go into the symphony toolbar. All right, so let's let's look at return data. So in my service class, if I go to return data, here's my simple query. Um, this is done using um, create query, and we're simply going to modify this a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our container. Okay, now that we've got the container defined, and this is because we're injecting the container interface through our um, constructor, now we can access more parts of Symfony. So what we're going to do is we're going to access Paginator. So let's go ahead and comment that out because we are no longer going to use the query execute method. All right, so the first thing is we're going to define paginator and then we're going to call the KNP paginator using the container to grab that. And that's where the containers come into play. And then we're going to update our query. And I'm just going to copy and paste from one of my examples. Okay, so let's go over this. So here I'm going to take results equals paginator, and we're going to call paginate, which is part of 
of the um, the software from KMP. We're going to pass in our query, which is dollar query. Um, then we're going to pass in the request. Now this is a new thing that we're going to add. So let's go ahead and add the request. And then we need to go back to our controller and add it there as well. And then we're going to pass the request. All right, so we have successfully injected um, get and post into our service class. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we can um, pass the parameters of page and limit and you know through the query string. Now by default, it's going to take request query and then get in into you know int page and then the default is going to be one. And then the limit which is the, you know, the number of records we're going to display, um, we're going to default that to five. And then we're going to return the results. All right, so let's go ahead and save both of these files. I'll point out one thing. Um, I just changed it here a second ago. Um, my variable is results and not results. So if you're following along, just make sure you put an S right there. Otherwise, you will get an error. Now, I just saved and refreshed this. And as you can see, it is now returning five records. But we don't have any navigation on the bottom yet to be able to you know, go back and forth between the different pages. So that's the next part. We're going to add that in right now. All right, so let's go back to our controller. Now, we're going to open up our view. So we're going to look at demo and then list.html.twig. So let's go into our templates and demo and then here's list.html.twig. So this is just a basic um, HTML document. And let me just go over my template just so you can understand that. I'm, I'm using a basic Bootstrap 4 template from Bootstrap site. The way that I like to do things is I take my base file and I just put the basics in it and then I create a basic header and I throw in all my JS and CSS code there and then I create a basic footer and then you've got your flash message I'm not really using this right now but this is for doing nice little alerts so if we go back into list so now we have you know here's we're extending our, our base and then we're bringing in the header and we're bringing in our flash messages so this all gets displayed and then here we start a simple bootstrap table and then here we go through and we list the data and then here's the footer so really simple the only thing we're going to do is we're going to come down below your table and we're going to add a little bit of code. Okay, so I just added this div block, and again, this is on KNP site. The um, the only thing you want to make sure that you have in here is dollar data represents what you're passing over. So if you go into your controller, if you're passing in data, then that's what you're going to put in there. If you call this data one then this would be called data one and then that would be data one but we're we're going to call it data so we're just going to keep it simple put that back to data okay so this is all that you have to do so let's refresh our page and now we have our pagination and clicking on it and if you look at the URL, so here it's passing page two. If we click on three, look at the URL again. Um, there it's passing page three, and so forth. Now, if we come back into our service class, and if we change this five to three, and let's go ahead and refresh. So here it's only going to do three three results. Per page or three records. If we change it to four, it 
than there it does for. So this is by far one of the best methods of doing pagination. There's a lot of them out there. Um, just from my experience, this is this is probably the best way of doing it, and this is really the only way I would recommend doing pagination inside Symphony. Just um, you know, if you don't have an entity to bind, it's going to make things a little difficult. So it's well worth the time to do an entity. Um, again, so that is basically pagination in Symphony 4. If you like the video, um, please um, click on the like and click on the subscribe. Um, you know, and share it with your friends.